Today I have the Opez Mega 5 power unit and the extra battery, and we're gonna do a bunch of different tests with it. We're gonna see how long it can power a fridge for, how long it can power a window air conditioner for. We're also gonna go over when it would be best to have the Mega 5 versus the Mega 3, and what applications you would use each of the different power units. Right out of the box, we get a power cable here that goes from the extra battery to the Mega 5. And then we have, uh, this came with the Mega 5. This is our power cable to charge the Mega 5. And then as well as a few different Anderson connectors that come with it. You have your uh, MC4 to your Anderson connector. This is to hook your solar panels up to the Mega 5. And then you have your car charger and then also an extension cord and your owner's manual. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this thing hooked up, hook the two together, and we're going to run a load on it and drain it down completely. Per Opez's instructions, they want you to drain the batteries completely dead and then charge them up fully. This will help program the BMS and get everything working the way it needs to. All right, so for this test, I have this um, watt meter here that we're going to monitor the amount of watts that are going out of the power unit and get a grand total to compare with how much of uh, the battery storage is actually usable and then how much of the unit itself just consumes just staying running. So this is a refrigerator here that we have. I'm going to go ahead and unplug it from the wall and we're going to plug it into the power unit and we're going to see how long it, this power unit will be able to power this refrigerator. All right, so about 30 hours ago, we plugged in the refrigerator into the Mega 5, and we are currently now down to 1% with 13 minutes remaining, and we're drawing 126 watts, which is what I found to be the wattage of the refrigerator, and we have used a total of 3.058 kilowatts. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the spare battery here. You can see it's charged up to 100% and we're gonna see how much further that will take us. All right, so you can see that we have about 1,000 watts coming in right now, 1,100 watts coming in, about 1,100 watts going out. So this battery is dumping some of the power into this battery to keep this one up and running so it does not kill the inverter. So we'll continue to monitor it and we'll see where we're at uh, when the extra battery is dead. All right, so it has been a total of 60 hours. So we got an additional 30 hours out of the extra battery, which is what I would have expected. So we've used 7.1 kilowatts out of the outlet right here. That, that's what went to the fridge. The other three kilowatts went to inefficiencies and keeping the inverter and everything else powered up. Obviously, the higher the load, the lower the inefficiency will be and the greater usage you'll have. So if you are running a load that's maybe 1,000 watts, your inefficiency will be significantly lower. So we'll do a test here in a little bit and we'll test it with a higher amperage load and show you the inefficiency difference with that. So right now we're gonna go ahead and plug it into the outlet and we're gonna see how long it takes to give it a full charge uh, with both the extra battery and the main unit hooked together. All right, so she's really starting to spool up here and we've got it on the highest charge setting. So uh, we'll come back in a few hours and I'll let you know how long it takes. All right, so the next test that we did is we, after draining it down completely, we plugged it into the outlet and charged it at the maximum charging rate for uh, 120 volt charging. And it took us about five hours to get from zero to 80% charge, and then another additional two hours to go from 80% to 100%. So with two batteries hooked up, it takes a total of seven hours to get up to 100% state of charge. All right, for the next test that we're gonna do here is we're gonna run a window air conditioner here in the window. It is a 12,000 BTU air conditioner. So we're gonna do a test to see how many kilowatts it uses per hour and then figure out how long that the Mega 5s would be able to run this window air conditioner before it would use up all the battery. All right, so I've got my watt meter reset. We're at zero kilowatts. Turn the AC outlets are on. And so we're gonna go ahead and power up the air conditioner.
So I set it to the lowest temperature that it'll go and I put on the highest setting for the fan to have the highest draw that it could have. So it looks like the window air conditioner is drawing 776 watts. All right, so I'll check back here in about an hour and we'll see where we're at. So it has been one hour since we fired up the air conditioner and it looks like we have used 0.866 kilowatts of power and our battery life is down to 89% and showing we got eight hours of battery life left. Running a 12,000 BTU air conditioner, this thing would be able to keep that running for about for about nine hours. As you can see, the wattage creeped up a little bit. We're now running at about 870 watts. The reason for that is the compressor warms up on the air conditioner and as things heat up, you lose a little bit more efficiency. So that's where we're drawing a little bit more wattage now than what we were before. When deciding on what panels to use for your power generator, there's a few things that you wanna know when you're looking to purchase panels. So I'm gonna show you what to look for here and also how to hook your panels up to maximize the solar going into your power unit. So the first thing you wanna do when you're looking at panels is you wanna look at the tag on the panel, which is right here, which has all the different writings on it. So the main number that we're concerned about is the voltage of this panel. We're not really concerned about the wattage because you can go over the wattage. Power generator is rated for 2400 watts, but it's okay to go over the wattage a little bit on it. But the one thing you cannot do is go over on the voltage. So as we look here, this one here is rated for open circuit voltage. That's the number you're looking at, not the maximum power voltage. You want the open circuit voltage. So open circuit voltage of this panel is 41.53 plus or minus 3%. So plus or minus one and a half volts. So you're gonna say that this one here is about 43 volts. So we can hook up three of these panels together and still be under that 150 volt. That is the maximum rating of this power unit. If you go over the voltage, you can fry the charger on the power unit. So do not do that. If you go over on the wattage or the amps, it's no different than like the outlet of your house. If you have a five amp hair dryer that you plug into an outlet that's rated for 15 amps, the hair dryer is only gonna use the five amps that it can use. The other 10 amps are gonna stay in that outlet. It's just gonna not be used. But if you hook that hair dryer up to a 240 volt outlet that's rated for 15 amps, you will fry that hair dryer. So, so just make sure your voltage is not over. So we're gonna take 43 times three because we're gonna hook up three panels together and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. So three of them together would put you at about 130 volts, which is below that 150 volt mark, so we would be good to go with these panels here. So now to hook these panels up in series, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the male or female end of, of one panel and plug it into the opposite of the other panel. So these two will go together like that. And then if I have another panel that I want to add to it, I'm going to do the same thing. And so when I'm done hooking up all the panels, I'm going to have two different connectors that are left unused and they're going to be opposite connectors. I will then use these two connectors to plug my cord in that will go to the generator. So now you might be asking, well, should I buy the Mega 5 or should I buy the Mega 3? Which one would be better for your needs? So a few different questions you may want to ask yourself when you're looking at which of the power units to buy is one, how much battery power do you need? Do you need a ton of battery storage? Would just the, the Mega 5 be enough or are you going to need extra batteries? The other question you're going to want to ask yourself is, is most of your load going to be during the day? Are you looking to run an air conditioner where you're going to have heavy loads? Or are you looking just to power refrigerators which is going to be a pretty consistent throughout the day and throughout the evening? If you're going to be running heavy loads during just during the day, then you may want to consider buying this unit right here with an extra battery because one thing that the Mega 3 has that the Mega 5 does not have is the extra battery has a charging port too. So you can double up your charging capability. So it will uh, charge this battery up when this battery is fully charged then it'll take the charge from the solar from here and then charge the mega 3 as well so you will charge this incredibly fast with the extra charging capability the mega 5 only has the the pv charge port on the main unit itself the extra batteries do not have one if you're looking at being mobile with this setup like say you're going to go camping and you want to put it in the camper and you're going to be constantly putting it in taking it out putting it back in you may want to consider this unit here if lifting heavy objects is a consideration for you. 
Though these, both these units are the same size, the Mega 5 is significantly heavier than the Mega 3. The Mega 3 is heavy, the additional batteries are much lighter, so if you're going to be moving them in and out of a camper a lot, I would probably go with this one here instead. If you're looking at having backup just in your home, then this probably would be your better option. If you're looking for a lot of battery storage, you can add a lot of extra batteries to this unit here and have a pretty substantial battery bank. And if you're not looking to capture a whole lot of solar and go that route, you just want the peace of mind of knowing that you have the battery storage for power outages, this is definitely the way to go. It's a little more bang for your buck when it comes to the cost per watt. Both of them are great units. I've been using this unit for the past few months and it has been working great for me. I use it to power certain loads at our house. So like I have a pool out in the front yard and there's a pool pump that runs just during the day. So having the extra solar PV coming in is great because this unit here captures enough solar to run that pump and then this unit here will uh, capture enough solar to charge the unit up so I can get up to a full charge by the end of the day. Where with this power unit here, I would not be able to do that because I would not be able to get to a full charge with just PV alone because it would not have the capability of inputting that much PV power. I hope this video was helpful in your decision making process on the two different generators. If you found this video helpful, please hit that subscribe button down below and follow along to the channel.